An interface is a shared boundary across which two or more separate components of a computer system exchange information. Poorly identified interfaces cripple the resulting system behavior. In general, we distinguish between interfaces that are required by a component so that it functions correctly, and interfaces that are provided by a component for its environment. Interfaces can be displayed in different ways. In this tutorial, I will discuss four variants how you can visualize interfaces in Enterprise Architect. Let's create an example. When we think of a component for translating text, such as a translator, to which text can be sent for translation, in fact the translator component provides iTranslate interface, via which it receives text for translation by calling the translate operation. Another component, for instance the application, uses the iTranslate interface so that it can have text translated by translator component. This dialog gives you the option automatically override methods from realized interfaces. In this case we won't use it. The app calls the translate operation, passes the text to be translated and receives the translated text as a result. The app does not know that it has actually worked with the translator component. It only knows iTranslate interface. By the way, this is the first variant how you can visualize an interface. Connecting the interface directly with the appropriate components using either use or realize relationship types. If you want to make visible all the details of the interface and your diagram has a lot of space to spare, this is your winner. Now let's have a look at a second variant, how we can visualize interfaces in a diagram. For that, I'm going to create a second diagram and I'm going to copy and paste the translator and application component. Enterprise Architect allows dynamically show dependent or implemented interfaces for the current element based on the realized and used relationship. To see the representation in the diagram, the option Show Realized Interfaces or Show Dependent Interfaces must be activated in the context menu. This setting displays the lollipop representation for the realization relationship and the socket symbol for the use relationship. The symbol is a part of the graphical display of the component and cannot be moved. This variant does not show all the details but saves the space in the diagram. There is another alternative in EA using the exposed interface as placeholders. So again we will copy those two already existing components as links onto the newly created diagram and use the dedicated element from the toolbox expose interface. The exposed element is a separate model element so-called structured or embedded element which must be attached to the component element. Then it becomes a child element of that component. It cannot exist independently. The exposed interface does not exist as a model element in UML standard though. Semantically, this variant is identical to the previous one, but EA offers its own model elements for it, which can be repositioned as desired. It is also possible to create a relationship from and to exposed interfaces. The common relationships are dependency and information flow. The dependency shows from the required interface to the provided, since the required interface is of course dependent on a provided interface. However, if you want to express what information flows from the provided interface to the required interface, you can also use information flow. And here in the browser you can see how the structured exposed interfaces are owned by the components. Okay, so let's have a look at the last way how to capture interfaces in Enterprise Architect. Again, I'm going to create a diagram and copy and paste the existing, uh, the existing components as links. But this time, 
I will use the relationship assembly. An assembly connector bridges a component's required interface with the provided interface of another component. This relationship looks graphically like a dependent and provided interface. However, the UML has not intended to configure an interface model element to express which interface this relationship represents. So if we want to assign the name of the interface, we have to name the relationship after the interface. However, naming the relationship might lead to inconsistency. Let me demonstrate and point out the difference in comparison to the previous interface representations by this example. If I change the name of the interface, the name of the exposed interfaces also changes, since the interface element is linked. However, as you can see, the name of the assembly connector remains unchanged. This and many other exercises can be found in our book, Compendium of Enterprise Architect. This paperback serves as the documentation and guide for UML with Enterprise Architect training, but is also excellent for self-study, delivery within Europe and worldwide. Did you like our tutorial? Please let us know in the comment section below. And please, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video with your colleagues. Click one of these to watch more. Thank you for watching.